Hello? Yeah, is that the old car addiction clinic? Yeah, I think I need to book myself in. Hey guys, it's Joel and welcome back to the channel and to, well, my elusive Copart 300,000 mile Volvo XC90. Now, if you are relatively new to the channel, you've only been here since the KN content started, then you might not have seen this and might not know why I'm doing an update on it, but this is my XC90 and well, a few months back before the new year started, I spent a really significant amount of time getting this thing through its MOT. I can't remember the exact dates now, but I believe the MOT was coming up in around October of 2023. And well, as to be expected for a XC90 that cost 800 pounds from Copart, it failed that MOT. But I was just really horrible of all the suggestions I was getting from everyone of saying I should just scrap it and throw it in the bin because this, although it's an XC90 and they are everywhere, it's an executive edition model. And well, I may be finding that more exciting than most people would, but if you're anything like me, you'll understand that there aren't too many of these around. I was obsessed and still am obsessed with its green carpets, its piped leather seating, and just everything about it really. I love the color and I love the way it looks. And ever since watching School of Rock when I was a kid, years and years and years ago, I remember all of the cars with the parents of the kids at that school. They had Volvos and some of them were XC90s. And if you look at any sort of American film from that early noughties era or mid noughties, the wealthy families in those films always drive XC90s or L322 Range Rovers for that matter. So I always had a soft spot for these and always wanted one and that's why I sought one out and bought this one. But it did turn out to be a little bit of a nail and unfortunately the reason it sat here is because, well, quite frankly it still is. So the current situation with this car is we did, if you followed that content, get it an MOT. It needed a few bits doing to get through that MOT that I wasn't able to do myself namely with the handbrake, it wasn't working at all. So actually, I spent a lot of money getting the rear handbrake shoes or brakes or this, I'm not quite sure, getting it all rebuilt to pass the MOT. Um, and I can't remember what else, to be honest. There is a bit of paperwork in the car that we can recap on to remind ourselves. But ultimately, I spent 1,200 quid getting this thing through its MOT, and pretty much since I got the MOT, it's sat here on my parents' driveway, sawn, it's unfortunately just sat here not really being used. So the reason for making this video then is, well, one, to update you on exactly what I've just told you, because I know a few of you were wondering what happened to the car. And it is a little bit odd that I did that whole series, spent all that money, and then it's just been sat here. But we'll go into why that is a little bit more in a minute. Um, also, I just wanted to come and check on the car because I know it's not been started in a very long time. I think actually it's the start of February now, and I, I, I don't think I've actually started this car since before Christmas. So just over a month, my dad tells me that he's not been running it up either. So we're just gonna basically give it a run up to temperature, see what's working, see what's not working. Just give it a little bit of a, a run and hopefully it's still as I left it. So um, yeah, without any further ado then, let's jump in and see if she starts. So let me very quickly say thank you to Car Vertical for sponsoring today's video with the XC90. Now, if you don't wanna buy a nail like I did with that car, then I very strongly encourage you to use car vertical. For me, it's now become a very essential tool when it comes to buying cars. Car vertical allows you to check a large database of information which can tell you if your car that you're potentially buying or the one that you even own now has had any issues with damage or undeclared mileage rollbacks, theft and much, much more. You can see on this particular Volvo XC90 diesel from 2003 that it has previously received damage. Uh, quite bad by the looks of things. In fact, we even have photos on this report from Car Vertical. Yeah, <laughs> here's obviously some photos from it at the auction yard, I guess when it got wrote off by the insurance. You can see the airbag's been deployed, the bumper's hanging off, the front right headlight is missing. And uh, yeah, this damage looks quite extensive and so probably a car to avoid buying. So if you are currently looking at buying a car, I do strongly encourage you to do a Car Vertical check. If you want to do so, you can get a discount using my code on screen and down in the description below. Also, I've found it something that's quite fun to do with cars that you've owned previously, or even cars that you own now. <laughs> Sometimes you might be in for a nasty surprise, but hopefully not. So follow the link and use the code in the description down below to get yourself a nice discount. 
thank you to Car Vertical for sponsoring today's video. So I will just briefly say perhaps one of the reasons this hasn't had much attention of late is, well, this, my KN. As you can see, they are, for all intents and purposes, very similar cars. They're both four by fours, although that one actually isn't because it's only running in two wheel drive. That's a whole other thing. They're both four by fours. They're both family cars. That one obviously has seven seats, which it wins on there. But they're both, you know, good winter cruisers. And obviously the KN is doing that job for me very well at the moment. And so really I have no actual need for the XC90. But truth be told, I just, I don't want to let this thing go because I think partly of, well, I get very emotionally, embarrassingly emotionally attached to cars, but I did put a lot of blood, sweat, tears and money into this thing, getting it to where it is now, even though it is clearly a bit unloved. It's very, very dirty. The bodywork was always terrible on this thing. There's scratches all over it. I'm sure you can probably just about see. The wheels are in dire need of some refurbishment. This here was always broken can sort of glue it back on if you really wanted to, but obviously the car, even if it was mechanically perfect, would need cosmetic attention. I think ultimately there's just such a long list of things that need doing to this Volvo. I'm kind of a bit scared to commit to anything. And so I'm very lucky. It's just, uh, well, I've had the option to basically just dump it here. Sorry, mum and dad, but there we go. Here we are. So let's try and unlock the thing. That's a good start, isn't it? Now, to be honest, I did go in here earlier, so I knew that that was going to happen. What I haven't done is started it. Wow, it does need a good clean, doesn't it? Maybe I could give it a clean. Yeah, look at that, the beautiful seats, absolutely stunning. And what you can't pick up on is that smell. This car, I don't know if it's good or not, but it just has a really distinct scent to it, but I, I love it. So let's open a slightly janky key. Let's pop it in the ignition and then I'm just going to sit down and see if anything happens. I'm just going to leave the door open just in case it is really flat and wants to lock me in here. That wouldn't be very fun. Oh, wow. Yeah, these seats. These seats are super comfortable. I forgot about that. Wow. Oh, look. The electrics are working. Right. That is a good sign then. Right. I'm going to, I'm going to turn the ignition. That's a good start. We can see there 307,822 miles. And I'm not sure if I ever told you, but the last time I drove this car, which was down here to basically dump it before I took it off the road, um, I realized the odometer wasn't working. It was frozen on that number. And it's pretty much been that number. I look back on my first content with this car. It's pretty much been that number since I bought it, despite having done maybe close to a thousand miles in the car. So <laughs> yeah, it's kind of funny that odometer is frozen and potentially it could be a lot more than 300,000 miles. Right, I should probably try and start it before I drain the battery too much. Let's see if this starts, I will actually be very impressed. Oh, oh. <laughs> wow. Oh yeah. It's knocking like a Jehovah's Witness, but it did start. And uh, I am actually quite surprised by that. And it seems to be, yes, I mean, running nicely. It always was very, very thumpy, this engine and yeah, I, I can't really explain it other than it's just got a real boom to it. And I think it's probably running on only four of the five cylinders. I think we can nail, nail it down to being a, a leaking injector. But yeah, just one of the other things that hasn't been sorted. Well, that tire is flat as a pancake, isn't it? Right, so what I wanna do as we're in a private car park, I'm gonna just put it into gear, reverse it, drive it around a little bit, just, you know, try and change a couple of gears get it up to temperature somewhat. I'll pump that tire up first though, because I do not want to do any more damage. But yeah, it is running and it sounds, well, it sounds not great, but it sounds as I left it at least. Just have a quick look in the back. Oh yeah, oh, look at those carpets. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you are just relieved that I haven't been mentioning green carpets for a while, but just look, sorry, but just look at the way that that green carpet contrasts with this dark wood finisher. Isn't that just, that just fills my soul with joy. I know I'm very weird, but I think that's why you watch my videos. That makes me very happy, even though this thing is <laughs> unusable. Oh, and yes, I almost forgot about that. Oh my goodness, yep. The sagging headliner. Yeah, very sagging headliner. I think that's a record for me. I've not had anything quite that bad before. Ah, oh gosh, do you know what this thing is? Splendid. 
even the rear seats, they're not electric, but they do recline, not recline, go forwards and back. So if you want more room for your seven seat passengers, um, you can pull this seat all the way forward. And as you can see, my knees are against there, but it's not uncomfortable in the slightest. Or if you watch the difference, I can go all the way back like that. And that is extremely comfortable, way more comfortable than the back of that KN. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but the seats are much softer in here and far more supportive. Gosh, you know what? Oh, it's really bad. Because I've pretty much come to the conclusion that this car, despite the fact it's not worth much, and I'm lucky enough to pretty much just be able to leave it here for as long as I want, I should just get rid of it. But now that I've sat at it and started it up, it makes me think, yes, we should, we should get this thing going. And I definitely don't want to get rid of it now. More green carpet in the back. That is just fantastic, isn't it? I mean, the green carpet alone, it's just worth it, isn't it? How could you scrap a car like this? Because that is my only option. I could, I could sell it to one of you, but you know, given all of the work that we know that this car still needs, I mean, what could I ask for? It's a, an XC90, I could say a thousand pounds, but then again, you can probably get a really, really nice XC90 for two and a half, three grand. And I can't say for sure that this wouldn't need more than two grand spent on it to get it to that level. So, you know, I could sell it to one of you as a project, but I'd basically get no money for it so what's the point um but then maybe yeah maybe that would still be better than just leaving it here neglected but i think if we wait long enough there might come a time where you know i don't have the kn or i've got a little bit of spare cash to throw into something like this then we could get it going again it doesn't have to be tomorrow but if i keep it then I, you know i keep the options i'm basically i'm a hoarder i am a hoarder i need to get myself checked and uh, most people, you know, they collect <laughs> sort of classic Mercedes and, you know, old Ferraris and stuff. But one, you all start somewhere. And two, I am a bit weird. I do like my SUVs, especially ones with green carpets. Right, anyway, let's find a, a, uh, let's find a tire pump and uh, get some air into, into that front left. And we'll just give it a little run around the block, see if it still goes into gear and all of that sort of jazz. That's funny that this <laughs> this door doesn't open at all uh does this one open let's see yeah all right well that's something else to put on the list then the rear right door doesn't open look at that flat as a pancake less than 10 psi that, or two psi it's saying on there that could take a little while while that does its thing, let's just look around the rest of the car. Oh yes, look, there's a bunch of parts here that I didn't, yeah, ABS rings. That's the other control arm. That's the ball joint that, if you remember, I thought was broken. And then I looked at the ball joint again and thought, that doesn't look right. It was so bent. And then a piece of one of these silver bits on, on the ball joint fell off. But that was before you all very kindly informed me that a ball joint is a ball and therefore is meant to move around like this. Um, so yeah, that's a funny memory actually. Ball joint, control arm, uh, ABS rings. Yeah, I forgot that they were in there. The glove box probably has, probably has the receipt for that work that we did last, which it, yeah, here it is. 839 pounds for the brakes. And then I paid to have a number plate light wiring harness at the back of the car. Yeah, all of the work came to a total there of 1,223 quid. So that I did, you can see a date probably somewhere. Yeah, December of 2023. And then basically since then, got through the MOT, but I've not used it. So that's a bit silly, isn't it? But yeah, I did have a lot of money and time spent on it. Here's the controller for the sat nav, which obviously doesn't, doesn't work, which we know. However, I did notice something when I looked at this car last in December, I don't think I included it in the content, but this now, this system, oh, it's not gonna do it now, is it? When I switch it on using this power button, it comes up with Dolby Pro Logic on the screen, um, but obviously, hilariously, <laughs> it's not doing it now, is it? But it was, it, it was coming up with Dolby Pro Logic and, and you could go uh, in here in the sound side and fiddle with the settings, but I've never once managed to actually get any noise coming from the stereo or the radio or anything like that. Let's tell you what, let's just fire all of the conditioning through. Let's put it on 22 Celsius, all of these, try the heated screens, heated seats. Might as well let that all run through while we're here anyway. Uh, oh, it's done absolutely nothing. 
Hmm. Luckily, my dad is here to assist because that last one was pants, but he's got a proper one that should work. Although, what is it with this one? You have to put a tennis ball because it's, it's you have got, to hold the yeah, yeah, you on have the to whole time. Jam a tennis ball in there. So this tire inflator he's got, you have to hold the handle physically for it to work. Uh, but he's got this contraption or this idea. Jam a tennis ball in there and you don't have to anymore. Uh, which is handy because this one at 10 PSI for this tire, uh, it's going to take quite a while I think. 10.5, 11. I want to get it up to at least 30 before I drive on it, even if it is just around the car park. 10.5. Yeah, very clever. It's similar to the technique I use at a fuel pump where I try and jam the filler cap into the nozzle so that I don't have to stand there like a lemon and hold it, which is very handy on the KN actually because with that 100 litre tank on that car, it takes a jolly long time to fill it up. So that's a bit of a godsend. But anyway, handy having Dad around, otherwise I would have been a bit stuck here. Yeah, in the back on this side, it's yeah very much the same thing, isn't it? It's just such a gorgeously specced car, this. And I can't begin to tell you, I mean, a lot of you probably have XC90s or at least have owned them maybe. The leather in, in this executive model, it wasn't like a, a particularly soft leather that you could spec at the time. Um, it's just beautiful. It really is beautiful. Just thinking I'll probably yeah, make sure these vents are on as well so the air's coming through the back also. Shame about that headliner. What about in the boot then? Obviously with XC90 we had the split folding tailgate like you find on Range Rovers. And I have to say, this one feels even better built than the ones you get on that. You can sit on it like you can with a Range Rover. But the Range Rover doesn't have green carpet. Absolutely stunning. Let's see if I left anything in here from when I did my sleeping challenge. There's just rubbish in there. There's some old wheel nuts. That's probably from when I did the mechanic challenge thing. It's an old number plate light cover. And I think they're just various bits of plastic trim that probably should be in the car, but have come away at some point. Oh, it's such a gorgeous car. I mean, look at the way the blue contrasts with the green of the carpets. It is beautiful. Let's pop this back up. So cool. In the front then, it looks like the car is getting, yeah, it's been on a few minutes now. It's getting a little bit of temperature. That's good. Let's give it a little rev. Beautiful, it has such a linear throttle response, this car, it's like really instantaneous. There is something about diesels, isn't there, in the way that they provide torque. There's just something so lovely about driving a diesel car. I do miss driving this because it, despite it being a bit underpowered, which I'm used to with the KN, to be honest, it just felt like it was always, you know, ready to give you what you needed. So I, I, I did, do like driving this car. Maybe, who knows, maybe one day we will drive it again. I'd like to think so. Comment below if you're interested in, um, well, I suppose either helping me out with like getting this thing back to former glory properly. I mean, we got it through an MOT, which I'm really proud of myself for doing, but obviously it's still not quite in good enough nick to really drive and use, which I'd like to do that. So if you want to help me out, let me know. But also if you'd be interested potentially in maybe buying it off me, I might consider selling it. Certainly if you were thinking of like restoring it and doing what I can't do, then um, I'd seriously consider uh, selling it to one of you guys. That'd be so cool actually, if, if we could work that one out. So yeah, do comment below what you think. Anyway tyre should hopefully be done very shortly and we can give it a little bit of a run around the block and see if let's see if it works basically that would be uh, good to find out wouldn't it all right 32 psi that should probably be uh, enough for me let's move the tennis ball there we go pop this out trying to lose too much air put the cap on oh dear like i say if i was actually driving this car on the public roads i would make sure all the pressures were correct but i can see the other ones aren't flat as a pancake at least and 32 psi is sufficient for this it'll be interesting to see if it goes down quickly or if that's just a long-term sort of slow puncture there we go yeah let's give this thing a little run around the car park and see if it's still well see if it still drives let's pop it into reverse first yeah that's gone in let's release the handbrake that i paid basically a thousand pounds for. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, we've got ABS light, obviously then seatbelt lights, because I haven't got my seatbelt on. Uh, let's pop that down. Don't know why, just felt like it. Oh, it moves, <laughs> it moves, that's good, it's not stuck. 
Yeah, it steers, it reverses. I'm not actually using any throttle here. It's just going off its own steam. Ah, yeah, so far so good. All right, so let's pop it into drive, see if we can turn it around. Let's try not to hit the KN or my dad's Skoda. That wouldn't be very funny, would it? All right, so going between reverse and drive, it's absolutely fine. Steering feels good. I know the alignment was way off in this car. Um, it could be alignment, it could be the wheels. Uh, it could be a number of things, couldn't it? We won't go out there because that is the public road. So we'll just stop it, pop it back in reverse. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, it's gone into gear really easily, no problems. It's not even bumpy, actually. Let's see if we can go for first into second here. So you don't have much space to play with. There's first gear. And let's just shift up to second. Yep. Very good. And the brakes, I have already checked them, are working really, really nicely. Yeah, wow, I'm actually quite surprised, to be honest, that it's just, it's literally as, as I left it, like almost, gosh, it's actually, no, it's almost two months ago, isn't it? It's not two months yet. Um, it's been a while though since I've like started this thing and certainly since I've driven it. It's probably best part of two months since I've actually driven it like any sort of mileage. So um, the fact it's still going is good, I suppose. And yeah, unfortunately makes me really, really not want to get rid of it. Hmm. Yeah, this, this, this filming, filming this video has not helped anything today. Um, I suppose I was sort of going to decide after this what I should do. I just want to hear what you guys think too, but it would be an utter waste, wouldn't it, to get rid of this thing. I mean, I know it's a bag of nails and it's an old diesel XC90, but it's bloody beautiful. Look at it. Look at this stunning interior. You get the headlining sorted. You know, it could be a, it could be a really, really nice car. It's just I don't really have the energy or the money right now to to sort of invest into this thing so that's why it's sat here anyway and that's why um you've not seen any content with it since i got it through its mot which is really silly but hopefully you understand a little bit more as to why and um yeah let me know your thoughts as as per usual i always appreciate your input on this channel it's probably my favorite part about doing this is, is talking with all of you so let me know what you think i'm going to keep the car running for a little bit more and um then unfortunately it will just be switched off and I'll head off in the KN back back home. Um, but yeah, I hope, I hope you've appreciated it. I, I've managed to give you some sort of update because it's such a shame every time I come here, the car's just sat and I think, oh, it's, it's wasted potential, isn't it? So let me know if you've got any good ideas and I can't wait to hear from you. So thank you all from the bottom of my heart for watching this video and uh, I'll see you all in the next one very, very soon.